Hello, this is Craig Resnick coming to you from the 2018 ARC Advisory Group Orlando Forum. With me today is my special guest, Benson Hoagland, Vice President of Marketing and Product Strategy of Opto22. How are you doing today, Benson? Great, Craig, thanks for having me. Hey, great, really glad you could be here. We all know certainly of the, of the interest in industrial IoT. It's a very key theme, uh, theme here at the Forum. How was Opto22 able to leverage that market trend and uh, what were some of the success stories that Opto22 had this year leveraging that market trend? Yeah, we've been pretty active in the uh, IIoT space and uh, have been for a number of years actually. Uh, 2017 was a pretty important year for us. We added a number of important key technologies to, um, to our products. Uh, the first one was we added something called a RESTful server to our PACs, and of course PACs are programmable automation controllers. And the problem we were solving uh, with that technology is uh, allowing secure authenticated access to a PACs uh, values, its data, its I.O. values, its uh, controller tags, and so on, through a very standardized programmatic interface. Uh, and that is what RESTful is, so using technologies like JSON and HTTP. Uh, the second thing that we did is we, we worked with IBM uh, and their Emerging Technologies Group to implement a technology that they created recently called Node-RED. And Node-RED is a visual programming tool that allows you to create data flows that allows you to stitch together various APIs or web services or, or connect to cloud platforms or whatever you may wish to do. And it's all web-based, it's all open source, so uh, we added that to our products. Uh, the third thing, which was also uh, a pretty big uh, event for us in uh, 2017, uh, was we partnered with uh, a company called Inductive Automation. And, uh, and Inductive has a, a product called Ignition, an Ignition platform. And they have an Ignition gateway, which is designed to run on servers and so on. Uh, but they've recognized this, uh, the, the advantages of getting some of their technology into edge devices. And so we've incorporated the Ignition Edge product right into uh, some of our products as well. Well, I'm glad you mentioned Edge because Edge is certainly a very, very hot topic uh, at, this, uh, at this forum. Uh, tell me a little bit more about some of the Opto22 Edge devices and solutions that help enable other products to, uh, to go, at the, go to the Edge. Exactly, so you know, the Edge is where we live. I mean, Opto22 has been in business for 40 some odd years and it's all been about you know, industrial I.O., about programmable automation controllers, uh, including um, uh, you know, packs that we've been shipping since you know, the mid-90s. Uh, but also about four years ago, at this event, we uh, launched a product called Groove, which was a basically a small, compact, Linux-based computer that you could run a number of different software on. Uh, and at the time, we launched Groove with a product called Groove View, which was this mobile uh, and web-based visualization tool that anything on the back end we could connect to and then provide you know, beautiful, visual, scalable interfaces to anybody with a smartphone or web-based uh, web device. Uh, so that was a, uh, a, a big enabler for people who wanted to move more technology out to the edge. Uh, and then on that, we, we added uh, things like Node-RED and the Ignition Edge platform. Uh, and those are products that we you know, obviously support and will continue to support for some time, but it also gave us an opportunity to take a step back and look at, okay, what's next? What's, What's next on the edge and, and how can we you know, f do, do things that haven't been done yet uh, at, on the edge of network in a safe and secure manner while providing a lot of simplicity but also a, a tremendous amount of power. Uh, and today, you can buy microprocessors that uh, have long lives and are designed to work in uh, environments that are challenging, you know, minus 20 degrees C to, to, to plus 70 degrees. Uh, there's, there's lots of, you know, available RAM and there's a, uh, we have a technology that allows us to create power fail safe file systems and, and really make a robust edge uh, uh, appliance. Uh, and that's really what we, what we tried to do. Uh, and so at this event, uh, here in 2018 at the ARC Forum, uh, we're, we're super excited to uh, announce our new uh, Edge appliance platform called Groove Epic. And Epic is an, is an acronym, uh, and that acronym is Edge Programmable Industrial Controller. So to your point, uh, it is an Edge device, uh, and it has a lot of Edge processing capabilities. Uh, list a few, uh, of course, the Ignition Edge on board is on there, so we're now offering Ignition Edge on this appliance. Uh, we also provide, again, the Node-RED uh, capabilities. 
uh, and MQTT uh, built right in. So this uh, MQTT is kind of uh, an up and coming, it's been around for 20 years, but it's an, it, you know, more and more people are adopting MQTT because of the tremendous benefits that it provides uh, to the OT side of the world in getting data unleashed from data silos. So that edge piece becomes uh, really, uh, really important. But at the end of the day, the, you know, an EPIC is a, as an acronym, a, acronym uh, is a Edge Programmable Industrial Controller. At the end of the day, it's still a controller. Real-time control engine, you can run your control strategies on there, uh, whether you want to develop them in, in our own pack control flowchart environment, whether you prefer to use an IEC 611.31 uh, development tool. But most importantly, Craig, and I think this is, a, this is a key thing, we've also opened up the Groove Epic platform to allow developers to run their own applications on there. This is something that nobody's ever done before, particularly at a controller and I.O. level. So now, you know, think about the concept of edge processing combined with these programmability options on an industrially hardened device that provides this real-time control and you can run your own, uh, your own software on there. You know, people certainly at the OT level and on the plant floor know Opto 22 very well. How long do you think it'll take to the people in the IT side to uh, know, uh, know Opto 22? Well, surprisingly enough, we've actually had uh, quite a bit of success on the IT side. Uh, dating back to uh, 1998, we were one of the first companies to deliver a product with Ethernet at the I.O. level, something we called Snap Ethernet I.O. And while the adoption period within our own industry, the OT side of the world, uh, took several years, the IT side of the world saw the benefits immediately. This notion of being able to connect to real world devices and then expose that data over a standard TCP IP interface was something that hadn't been done. So we immediately were able to create a relationship with IT people uh, very early on and, and, and created some really pretty spectacular applications. For example, uh, one that we did was with a, uh, a company called Crown Castle. And these are guys that own and lease out tower space, cell tower space. Well, they had thousands upon thousands of these cell towers all over the country. They didn't necessarily have an OT group to deal with that. They had IT guys that were dealing with uh, protocols like SNMP and network management tools. So in the year 2000, we teamed up with Computer Associates uh, based in New York, uh, which is called CA Now, and we developed a, a system that allowed them to put literally a, an IO system and controller on every cell tower all communicating back to an IT infrastructure. So to get back to your, uh, your question, we think we have a, a pretty good inroad right now with IT. Most of our uh, OT technology that we supply today uh, includes a number of different IT tools to, for access, the RESTful interface, uh, for moving data out, SNMP, SMTP, the list goes on and on. So I think we're in a pretty good spot with, uh, with the IT okay. folks in the world. And for one, one final question, we all know the trend towards selling apps, industrial automation, at the Apple store, mm -hmm. at the Android store. What does Opto 22 have for apps that are available through those, those channels? What's some of the functionality? So we do have a number of, of apps. One of them um, is called uh, APAC and IPAC, either for the iOS store or for the Android store. And this allows you to configure, commission, and troubleshoot your packs. And it's just a mobile app that you can download at no charge. Uh, from, Opto, uh, from the Apple or uh, Google Play Store. The second app we have is GrooveView for iOS and GrooveView for Android. The purpose of these products are simply to provide a cleaner interface to the Groove application that's running on Epic or on a Groove Edge appliance. Uh, and by that I mean you can certainly use the web browser on your smartphone uh, to navigate and see the screens that you created on any Groove application. However, you've got your URL bar and your back and forward keys on the bottom. What these new apps do is they, they take, kind of take that away. So they give you a nice full screen view of your process and it allows you to lock the, uh, the device down to just using that app. So this, this idea or the notion of using you know, off the shelf uh, tablets or, or even a, a smartphone or whatever, you can actually use those in industrial applications without worrying it, about it being say a personal device. So you can make a, you know, take off the shelf devices and use them in industry. Wow, that sounds great. Really, uh, really exciting. Thank We're you very much, Benson, for being here today. And again, this is Craig Resnick coming to you from the 2018 ARC Advisory Group Orlando Forum. Thank you very much. Have a great day.